So today, we are using the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. The converse of the Pythagorean theorem is a way to test to see if a triangle is a right triangle. And the way we do that is we see if the Pythagorean theorem works for the side lengths of that triangle. In other words, does a squared plus b squared equal c squared for that triangle? The one thing you have to keep in mind, though, as you're testing it out, is you have to remember that c represents the hypotenuse. And that's the longest side. All right, so when we're testing it out, we always have to remember to test out putting the longest side in for C. But, so let's do some examples here. Here's our first example. Again, we don't know if this triangle is a right triangle. The question is, is it? All right, the side lengths are 13, 84, and 85 centimeters. First things first, we find the longest side. The longest side of these is 85. So if this is a right triangle, this would be my hypotenuse and this would be C. Which means the other two sides are A and B and it doesn't matter which one's A and which one's B, they're interchangeable. One easy thing you could do is always give A the smallest length and B the next longest length and C the longest of all. Kind of put them in order. That'll remind you to make sure that C is your hypotenuse, is your longest side. All right, But again, mathematically, it doesn't matter which one's A and B. They're interchangeable between the two. Just make sure C is the longest one. All right, so let's test this out. If A squared plus B squared really does equal C squared, we know it's a right triangle. So A squared, A is 13, so 13 squared, plus B squared, B is 84, so 84 squared. Does it equal, and I'm putting a little question mark over the equal sign because I don't know, does it equal C squared, which is 85 squared? All right. So the only way to test it out is to actually calculate it and find out. 13 squared is 169. 84 squared is 7,056. And we want to know, does that equal 85 squared, which is 7,225? Okay, we're getting closer. We just need to add these two numbers up together and see what we get. So when we add these up, we get 7,225. And we want to know, is that equal to, hey, does it equal 7,285? Uh, 200, yes, it does. Look at that. So the two sides do equal each other. What does that tell me? It tells me that this is a right triangle because the Pythagorean theorem actually worked for it. So yes, this is a right triangle. All right, let's see another one. This time we've got another right. Uh, we got another triangle here. We don't know if it's a right triangle or not, but if you look at these three side lengths, the longest side is 43. So if it is a right triangle, that's got to be my hypotenuse, which means these other two sides are my legs. Here I'll give the smallest one A and the middle one B. Okay, so let's test it out. Does A squared plus B squared equal C squared? A is 26, so 26 squared plus b is 33, 33, 33 squared. Does that equal c squared, 43 squared? Well, 26 squared is 676. 33 squared is 1,089. And we want to know if it equals 43 squared, which is 1,849. All right, let's add these two together. 676 plus 1089 is 1,765. Does that equal 1,849? Well, obviously not. So they, they aren't equal. So is this a right triangle? No. It's not a right triangle because the Pythagorean theorem did not work for those three sides. All right, we've got time for one more. For number three, notice there's no picture for this one, but do you really need a picture? No, you only need to know the three side lengths. And it says we have a triangle with sides 18 centimeters, square root of 130 centimeters, and square root of 194 centimeters. All right, so this one's a little tricky. But the first thing we need to know is which side's the longest side. And it's kind of hard because two of them are square roots and one of them is a whole number. So the only way to really know which side's the longest side is we actually have to calculate these square roots. So it's either 18 or the big square root. So let's see, what is that square root of 194? It's about 
I'll write it underneath. So clearly 18 is bigger than that one. So of these three, 18 must be the biggest one. And if you're not sure, you can always test the 130 also, the square root of 130. It's about 11.4. But we knew the square root of 194 would be bigger than the square root of 130. But in case you wanted to see it, there you go. All right, so if these are the side lengths, then 18 is the biggest one, so that's gotta be our C. And the other two must be our legs, so we'll call these A and B. All right, now we can set it up using the Pythagorean theorem and see if it's a right triangle. A squared, A is the square root of 130, so square root of 130 squared, plus B squared, B is the square root of 194, so that's squared. We wanna know, does it equal C squared, which is 18 squared? It's a little tricky with the square roots, but actually not. It's actually easier if you really think about it because what happens when you square a square root? Squaring a square root undoes each other. The square root of 130 squared is just 130. Plus, the square root of 194 squared is just 194. And does that equal 18 squared? 18 squared is 324. All right, let's find out. If I add 130 to 194, I get 324. And does that equal the other side? Why, yes, it does. 324 equals 324. So guess what? Those three sides do form a right triangle because the Pythagorean theorem worked for it. All right? So that's how the converse of the Pythagorean theorem works. All right, what we're doing is we're testing to see if a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And if it does, then it's a right triangle. If it doesn't, then it's not. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please hit that like button. Also subscribe because it really helps us out. But with that being said, good luck on your math and I will see you next time.